While you were in office, you said that you would sign a federal abortion ban if Congress sent it to your desk. Why should Americans trust your word that you would not do it now if you were reelected? Because we don't need it any longer, because we broke Roe v. Wade, and we did something that nobody thought was possible. We gave it back to the states, and the states are working very brilliantly, in some cases conservative, in some cases not conservative, but they're working and it's uh, working the way it's supposed to. Every legal scholar, real legal scholar, wanted to have it go back to the states. Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, and we're able to do that. You know, what we did was give it back to the states, and now the states are working their way through it, and you're, going, you're having some very, very beautiful harmony, to be honest with you. You have, well, you have some cases like Arizona that went back to like 1864 or something like that, and a judge made a ruling, but that's going to be changed by government. They're going to be changing that. I disagree with that. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Just a follow-up. Over the, over the last few decades, Mr. President, you have both considered yourself pro-choice and pro-life. Which one is it? Well, you know exactly which one it is. And when I was in New York and when I was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan. You know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done, and we got it done. And I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And I'll tell you, the Democrats are the radicals on this because they're willing to have abortions in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. They're even willing, and you can call it what you want, but you go back to the governor of Virginia, the previous governor of Virginia, the Democrat governor of Virginia, where he talked about execution of a baby after birth. And you can say what you want, but that's extreme and that's radical. You plan to testify in your trial in New York? Yeah, I would testify, absolutely. It's a scam. It's a scam. That's not a trial. That's not a trial. That's a scam. If you read Jonathan Turley, if you read Andy McCarthy, if you read the legal, they said there's not even a case there. That's election interference by the Biden administration. They actually took their top guy, one of their top guys, put him into the DA's office to run it, and it's a shame. What they have done is incredible. It's election interference, and it's got to stop. It's a third world country. This country's never done it. But you read Jonathan Turley, you read Andrew McCarthy, you read the legal scholars, Every single one of them said that whole thing is a scam. It's not even a crime. And what they're doing is a crime. They are criminals. All right, Bob? Why do you believe it is important for you to testify, take the stand in this upcoming trial? And what are you watching as jury selection begins yeah. in New York? Well, you know, jury selection is largely luck. It depends who you get. It's very unfair that I'm having a trial there. It's very unfair that we have this judge who hates Trump and has tremendous conflict, as you know, tremendous conflict. Nobody can believe that this judge isn't recusing himself. The conflict is at a level that nobody's ever seen before. So I have that and I have venue. We have all these things that we've asked for. They don't give us anything. It's a witch hunt that takes place in New York and that is taking place. And it's very bad for New York and it's very bad and it's very bad for the judicial system in New York. I don't know, I'm testifying. I tell the truth. I mean, all I can do is tell the truth. And the truth is that there's no case. They have no case. And uh, again, you have to read the scholars, read all of the legal scholars. I haven't seen one legal scholar that said this is a case. And in fact, even you people said, oh, gee, that's too bad. This is the first one. All of them are scams. They're all about election interference. We have a, we have a president that doesn't know where he is. He can't speak. The whole world is collapsing. The world is on fire. They have no respect for our country anymore. And the only way he thinks he can win is by doing this, you know, trials of Trump. We have Fawny in Atlanta, who's been so discredited now. That was a setup with her boyfriend so they could take trips and take a lot of money out. And that's something that should be dismissed. Not just the prosecutor dismissed, the case should be dismissed. Every single one of them said, look at what happened with Biden. He gets off scot-free with 50 years of documents and classified information. He gets off scot-free. And I'm still fighting that trial. Uh, the whole thing is a disgrace, and it's a disgrace to our nation. Incompetent. Thank you all very much. All right. You've been listening.
to former President Trump. Uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson was also there uh, taking questions at the news conference at Mar-a-Lago in Florida. They were asked about the border. They were asked about abortion. Trump has even asked about Speaker Johnson's job security as he faces a threat from Trump ally Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who wants to um, have him removed as Speaker. CNN's Tom Foreman is standing by to do some fact-checking of what was said. Uh, but while he prepares that, let's bring back CNN anchor Kaitlyn Collins. Uh, Kaitlyn, obviously, uh, he said a lot of uh, harsh things, false things, things that are braggadocious, as he might say. What's your take on, on what we just heard? Well, a few things stood out to me, Jake. And one, you know, you didn't hear Speaker Johnson actually take any questions there. He talked at the beginning about some legislation that he wants to stand up that I should note has zero chance of getting passed through the Senate. But but in essence of how this went for Speaker Johnson, I mean, you see why he got on a plane today in Washington and flew down to Mar-a-Lago, because he just stood next to the presumptive Republican nominee and leader of his party as he stood by him and said he's doing a good job under tough circumstances and, and did not th throw any support behind Marjorie Taylor Greene's efforts to potentially oust Speaker Johnson from that job and the way that she has said she has no confidence in the way he's handling that job. Instead, former President Trump there speaking up for him and praising the job that he's doing. But, Jake, what broke through, obviously, from that is how Trump is feeling about what Monday is going to look like when he becomes the first former president to face a criminal trial. And he did say he's willing to testify. We'll see how his legal team feels about that. Mm -hmm. He has had a lot of animosity toward past attorneys who encouraged him not to testify at the Eugene Carroll trial. But what he said there, Jake, uh, really si underscores the significance of what Monday is going to look like. And the former president said jury selection is largely luck. It depends on who you get. And, and certainly those two sentences are true, Jake, among the things that he did say. And what that jury looks like is something that his team is hyper focused on right now. Because all it takes is one juror for this case to, to not go the way that the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, hopes it will go. And so clearly you can see just how focused he is on what Monday is going to look like. Jake, the other thing that we've been talking about all week is abortion. Uh, and you heard the former president there asked about why we should believe now that he won't sign a federal abortion ban if he's in office again. He says it would not be necessary because Roe versus Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court. And I think a statement that the Democrats will probably be using in their ads, he said, we broke Roe versus Wade, obviously taking credit for that, giving credit to the Supreme Court and the three justices that he put on that court. Um, but when he was asked one point, Jake, if he was pro-choice or pro-life, he said, you know the answer to that. But he did not say, you know, what that answer is. And that just stands out to me. I mean, you remember Governor Ron DeSantis said he doesn't think Trump is pro-life, that he thinks he actually, you know, is someone who you know, puts forward policies that aren't conservative and isn't actually a believer in that underlying policy. He didn't actually answer that question, Jake. Yeah, I mean, our bill will establish new safeguards. It'll put us on par, by the way, with virtually every other democracy around the world that also prohibits non-citizen voting. And, and this is a, a, a critical thing for us to do at a, at a very critical time. Our bill also will require states to remove non-citizens from their existing voter rolls. That's a big problem, too. And, and it will provide access to databases from the Department of Homeland Security and the Social Security Administration to help the states administer this. At, 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 as the entity that is responsible for regulating federal elections, Congress has this responsibility. We cannot wait for widespread fraud to occur, uh, to occur uh, especially when the threat of fraud is growing with every single illegal immigrant that crosses that border. This is something most Americans are deeply concerned about. The latest poll says 78 percent of the Americans who are polled say that preventing illegal immigrants from voting in our elections is a top priority. I've, in every place I've gone around the country, whether it's out west, midwest, Long Island, deep south, it doesn't matter. Everybody is concerned about this. We have a job to do. Here's what you need to look for, and I'll turn it back to the president. When we put this bill on the floor, you're going to see a record vote by Republicans and Democrats. You'll see that the Republicans stand for election integrity. And then we'll be able to ask this very important question of the Democrats. They're going to have to go on record. Do you believe the, the, that Americans and Americans alone should be the ones who vote in American elections? We're about to find out their answer. And I think that will be a very interesting one uh, for, for everybody to see. Mr. President, thank you again for uh, hosting us. So what you just saw there was a Donald Trump losing it at a press conference moment in the run up to his trial, but also his political implosion. As you can see his movement coming apart, because on the one hand, you do see him there 
with Mike Johnson and all these awkward moments. I kind of interspersed it with clips from the media of him just staring and making weird faces around Mike Johnson. But as noted there, it's really an ugly moment for Trump. It showcases that he seems to want to testify, which is a massive mistake. Let's be very clear about that. But also, he knows the Roe v. Wade stuff is politically toxic. But he can't distance himself too much from it because it is one of his defining legacies. And also his base wants to go more extreme. But the voters he needs to win, the swing voters, the on the fence people, the people that maybe voted for him in 2016, but not in 2020, uh, who don't like Donald Trump's insane social policies, he's not going to win them back without pissing off his base. And as noted there, this is also kicking off infighting between Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene and everybody else because Marjorie wants Speaker Johnson's head, but Trump just chose Speaker Johnson over MAGA Marge. And while Donald Trump is still the king, he can't piss off people like Marge all that much because he needs those people to be his fascist movement. And if he loses them, He loses what's going to drive him ultimately. He can't win. He needs his crazies, but with his crazies, he loses the moderates. He needs the moderates, but with the moderates, he loses his crazies.